He goes, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> nothing, just admiring. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Oz, and uh, as you can see, my desk is a bit of a cluttered mess with, uh, with Warhammer models and, and stuff like that. In fact, I'd like to talk to you about uh, Warhammer and miniatures and uh, the future and, and past and present of them. Um, over here I have my 3D printer and 3D cleaner. Here's the thing people, I've paid several thousand dollars uh, to collect Warhammer because it's like one of my favorite things. I just love building and painting stuff. But for every one model I have completely painted, I have about 50 that aren't. Here's one that isn't actually bought from Games Workshop. This is 3D printed. Well, this one I didn't actually print. I printed the other one that's half made over there. This one I ordered from a, from a store who 3D printed it. And then it took ages to come here, so I ordered a 3D printer and did it myself. But then this came here before I could really print it off completely. So anyway, it's a bit of a story. Thing is though, Games Workshop wants to charge an arm and a leg for it. And they want to be awful to their community for the pleasure as well. You know, they wanna stop people from uh, making fan animations. They want to sue people for having their name in the Warhammer, in the YouTube channel that they make for them. Stuff like that. Uh, so screw Games Workshop. And also they keep changing the prices. They keep making them more expensive uh, and giving you less for it. So yeah, uh, screw that. When you can print your own minis, what does that mean for the future of Games Workshop, you might ask? And if you're not, then why are you here? But uh, yeah, the future of Games Workshop isn't a good one if they keep attacking their fan base. I mean, they're gonna alienate everyone. Why would people buy their stuff when they can just print them? Instead of paying 150 bucks for a squad of 10 dudes, you can spend four hours printing off a squad of 10 dudes and you can customize them in any way you want because you can just open it up in blender and start doing it my good mate ben who collects warhammer as well he wanted to create his own army so what i did is we worked together and we made some custom shoulder pads in blender i printed them off for benno and uh they look pretty great why would you bother with games workshop who are just absolute pricks about everything when you can make it all yourself for incredibly cheap and it is any way that you want it to be. The dive that I kind of took into 3D printing is, <laughs> there is quite a bit of, um, I guess you'd call it Captain Jack Sparrow sort of content out there. There's a bit of piracy when it comes to, you know, 3D printing and STLs. I'm not gonna tell you where to find it. I'm not gonna tell you where to get all the stuff, but it's out there and it's pretty easy to find. There's tons of people, thousands of people making custom models and armies. And you know, you can get a lot of value paying for them. I certainly, the artist who made this, that 3D guy, and by the way, this is not the emperor, this is the ruler. Uh, yeah, uh, he's an incredible artist. I actually subscribe to his Patreon and you can get great value from that because you can, you know, there, he has polls like, hey, which model should I do next? And it's just, it's so cool. You can print off your own miniatures and action figures and stuff like that, you know? You don't have to go to these douchebag companies for it. Games Workshop, their business model is dying. They, they will not be a monopoly for miniatures uh, soon. These, this thing cost me $400 US versus the $1,000 that I spent on Warhammer. And I can just keep printing. Printer go brr. Well, it goes like that. But yeah, if you sped that up, it's brr. Games Workshop is really shooting themselves in the foot by not only going after their own fan base, you know, fan animators and stuff like that, the people who make content for their stuff, which is like free advertisement, they're also going after people with 3D printers. Imagine if Games Workshop brought out their own type of 3D printer specifically for their models. You know, they could even put, you know, types of encryption on it, whatever, and then they could sell their models, you know, on the cheap, but they could sell the printers for, you know, hundreds of dollars. Otherwise, they're gonna lose out completely. What are they thinking? Not thinking straight, they're being dumb. Uh, and they've always been, well recently especially, been really dumb. So the learning curve for 3D printing is you really should watch a lot of videos, like I'd recommend watching videos on, you know, top 10 things I wish I knew, stuff like that. Because I made a lot of mistakes. So for example, here's one mistake I made. The resin in that vat, right? It's a vat of resin, and then there's little bits of light that hit it and that hardens the resin, and thing pulls it out and does that over and over again and you get the model. Well, I had the vat full of resin and then I did a test light thing, which made the entire vat light up, which meant that I had like a, 
a solid thing of resin hardened on the bottom of the printer being because I'm dumb. <laughs> yeah, be careful of stuff like that. Um, try not to spill the resin anywhere. People said it's messy, but you get used to cleaning it up. You know, I, I don't get fussy about having to clean up the resin. You know, you gotta wash the models and uh, UV, blast them with UV light to make them harden up. Oh, I love that noise. And then once you're done washing, Come over here. This one's always hard to get off. <clears throat> then you snip the supports. Where's my snipper? These things, I printed off six of them for my good friend Ben, who previously was on Game Nights with us. Set of wings, very nice angel warriors. And here's how they work. Put this fella in here when he's cut out. Never put them in there when they're still in their supports because that'll be a hassle. And then you just put it on for say, I'll put it on for about an hour, but you have to watch it the entire time, unfortunately. And there you have it, all nice and hardened. But it's not hard once you get into it, you know, you can just, just print them out, you know? And between, uh, it's a, the biggest learning curve is learning how to do supports. I'll show you what I mean. Supports are probably the biggest learning curve in terms of learning to print models, having them be high resolution so all the detail is kept. This thing does have limitations. I'm not gonna go into how it all works because that would take a while, but basically you have to support these things you know, a lot of stuff comes pre-supported, but I find it best to support it yourself just so you learn. That's what I've been doing at least. You know, because you need supports to make sure they print properly with all the proper definition. Luckily, there's plenty of tools that actually show you where the supports are meant to go. And there's tons of videos showing you how to do supports. So I'd recommend going and checking those out. But if you like, you know, building and painting things, this is the way of the future. You know, where you can just go into Blender and build anything you want and print it off. Reach out and ask people who do it. Get involved in communities that do it and uh, learn. I certainly have learned a lot. Never paying for Warhammer again. Never again. I'll buy their paints, but I'm never paying for the plastic crack ever again. I've lost my addiction. I've lost my addiction to the plastic crack and instead I am huffing the fumes of this beautiful resin because it does smell like resin. It's kind of like a new car to me. Maybe that's just my weird nose. That's what I've been doing while everyone's been on break, while people have been sick. I've just been looking after those guys and painting as best I can and learning and printing. Look, I'm no Jazza, okay? I'm no Midwinter Minis. I'm a guy with severe ADHD, among other things. Yeah, that's the video, I guess. <laughs>